All I've seen is the intro and the tile screen and just get a basic understanding of the concept of this game and I'm already wondering how much THC oil that all the people at Team Gris Gris and 5PB had when they got together in a meeting room somewhere in Japan to uh, discuss uh, what would their next Corpse Party title be after they completed Book of Shadows and then somebody who was really tripping on the stuff suggested why not do a romantic comedy game and make it canon! It must have been some really good shit, I gotta say. Anyway, uh, greetings! My name is Neosekin, and welcome to a brand new Let's Play of Corpse Party, Sweet, uh, Sweet Sachiko's Hysteric Birthday Bash. So, this is a game that, uh, I've known about in passing for a, a while now, for past several months, actually, and I've tried my damn hardest to keep myself in the dark about this game, about this game, its story, and what have you, save for its basic concept. Because I have a feeling that this is the sort of game that I will bet get the best experience of going in as blind as humanly possible. Because I can already tell, again, going by what I see in the intro, and the tile screen, and, well, whatever I, and whatever little basic information I got about the game, this is going to be an experience. A very, very, very unique experience. Anyway, I've tweaked the settings to uh, lower the background mu background music of a volume a bit here, so hopefully you guys can still hear it at, hear it okay while uh, still being able to hear my voice okay. I've uh, did a, a couple I, I did a couple uh, test re recordings here with the different settings just to uh, try to find the right balance, and well, again, hopefully, uh, hopefully it'll turn out all right for you guys. So. I, one thing I will recommend that you guys do before uh, continuing on further, if you haven't already, is uh, check out my other Let's Plays of uh, previous Corpse Party games I've done in the channel before this one. Because the events that, uh, that uh, occur in those games, especially the official games, Corpse Party, uh, Blood Covered, Repeated Fear, and Book of Shadows, those events will tie into the events of this game, I think. Although, by how much, I have no fucking clue. But I imagine a fair amount. So yeah, just go ahead and check those out first, or play the games yourself, read up on them, do whatever the hell you wish, because, well... From after this point, spoilers will be inbound. You still here? Okay. So, let's just go ahead and just get this interesting journey that I'm setting myself up for started, shall we? Before I start new chapter proper, I want to take a look at options and bonus menus, so I uh, know, so I at least have a general idea of what of how much uh, of how much of the game I'll probably uh, have to complete in regards to, like, say, the ending list here. I'm not looking. I'm not looking at the. T I'm not. Try I'm not reading the, the names of the ch of the ending lists here. 
because I uh, want to be blind on the names too as I'm of the chapters I unlock them. But it looks like as though some of the chapters are going to have uh, a few, quite a few more endings than others, while others will be relatively short, much like a uh, Book of Shadows for it. And as for bonus, we got our Gallery of Spirits or CG artwork, character dossier dossiers. Read profiles on each of the game's primary cast members. We got a curse phonograph for music tracks, case books. Review Corpse Party series lore. Hmm. Okay, so it's got a little recap section here. It's really nice of them to uh, put here. They also got relationship chart, Shinozaki family tree. Yeah, we've seen this same we've seen this uh, same family tree at the end of Book of Shadows, so it's nice that they included that here too in a timeline of events. Thank you, Team Gris Gris, for uh, putting uh, this casebook option here. This will this is indeed a very uh, useful feature that you could have implemented. And we got notes and journals from Corpse Party series victims. Post. Mm -hmm. I'm assuming that, the, yeah, I'm assuming that the, these are uh, newspaper articles that I was able to find in uh, Blood Covered. Because if that's the case, then I'm just not I'm not going to read these here because these are uh, things that we've already uh, read before in uh, the previous games. Okay, so I've checked out the bonuses in the options menu. And that I think that's enough horsing around. Let's start this thing. Blow out the candles. Five more seconds. Four, three, two, one. How are you able to uh, tell the time on that thing? There are no hands. Heavenly Host Elementary, a hell that exists beyond the concept of place, where the dead roam free and eternally torment the living. And our story begins when the one who rules over this hell, Sachiko, the girl in the red dress, suddenly lost consciousness and fell to the floor. The child's spirits, who were bound by the curse of this school, all gathered around her quizzically. And the oldest among them, Yuki, reached out her hand to touch Sachiko's shoulder, almost as if in worry. <laughs> Only for Sachiko to spring her own arm up and grab hold of Yuki's encroaching hand in a single motion, glaring at her prey with bloodshot eyes. Well, Yuki, you should have known what you were putting your arm towards. I can only hope that uh, whatever she's going to do to you next, it won't be too painful. <laughs> Yep, still pulling off the same uh, nightmare fuel infested facial expressions. Perhaps glaring is too gentle a word. From betwixt her black strands of hair, eyes like daggers shot at Yuki, boring through her already hollowed cranium. However, Yuki chan, ohayo! 
Yuki, good morning. Should I? I'm not. I don't think I should trust this. As pleasant as your smile is, I, I feel like it's a trap. <laughs> In the next instant, the expression on Sachiko's face changed to a smile. None like that of an ordinary child. Yeah, well, she's pretty good at acting like an ordinary child, as the last two official games have shown me. You cannot judge this particular book by its red cover, is what I'm trying to say. It was an infectious smile, too. Yuki, Ryu and Tokiko alike all lit up like candles from its glow. Ha! Candles. Uh, number zero, hysteric birthday. Sachiko then turned for a moment to face the calendar on the wall, and as if on cue, the old date listed thereupon tore away and drifted to the floor. As it fluttered with a faint crinkling sound, the newly reborn calendar now proudly displayed its new moniker. July 19th. So, you were born on July 19th, huh? Yatta! Kotoshi mo kita yo! Sachiko no tanjoubi! Hehehe! Finally! It's here, at long last! My birthday! Oh, Happy birthday! Oh, God! I... Uh, to Tokiko's cat form a coherent sentence. So oh, dear, that's horrible. <laughs> Hammer time! Arigato. <laughs> Tee, <laughs> thanks. So Hi, Yoshie. Sachi, happy birthday. Ukasan dako. Hugsies, mommy. <laughs> Iko ne. Kyo ichinichi dake wa. You look so much better when you're not undead, Yoshie. Heh, <laughs> what a good girl you are. Today, while we can, let's make sure to have a fun time together. All day long. You bet. What's it called again, Mommy? When you let the people you've captured off the hook? Uh, bail? Pardon? Um, amnesty, perhaps? Well, that too. Yeah, that's it. Today, I'm going to give everybody lots of amnesty. Yay? Gather everybody who's not dead yet in the gym for me, okay? <laughs> and what makes you think that anybody's going to just follow some random person showing up to direct them all into a gym here. I mean, I'm... Well, then again, this is Heavenly Host, and, uh... Most peop... I'm pretty... Yeah, I'm pretty sure that, uh, most people's concern in this place would be just... You know, the ghost children and what have you attacking them rather than other humans, unless... Said humans prove themselves to be dangerous, so... I don't know, maybe some... Unless they're already just batshit crazy from darkening, maybe... Maybe they'd be more inclined to follow some random person to some location. <laughs> Actually, wait. This place has a gym? <laughs> I certainly hope this proves to be a memorable birthday for her. Well, I'm sure it's going to be a memorable birthday for me and everybody else, that's for sure. Satoshi! Show, show us your handsome mug, young fellow. I want to take a good look at you. When I came to, I found myself in a very spacious but dimly lit building. The ceiling above me had to have been a good 30 feet or more off the ground, with rows of lights evenly spaced along its entire area. 
and the floor below me was clearly varnished, shining with a glossy finish. I lifted my head a bit, and surveyed the area in front of me. This music, though. And the first thing I saw was a stage, flanked on both sides by drawn red curtains. And right in the middle of it was a podium, like the kind you typically see principals staying behind as they introduce themselves to new classes. So I'm in an... an auditorium? The rain was coming down in sheets outside, and a steady pitter-patter of it on the roof filled this entire massive space with a deceptive calmness. On either side of the room, a plastic basketball hoop stretched its way up toward the ceiling, eagerly reaching like its players might. The, sa the space served as gymnasium and auditorium both, like so many others did in school buildings from throughout the mid-20th century. <laughs> I'm still here. This can only be Heavenly House Elementary. Damn it! Guess I still wasn't able to stop the Sashiko ever after ritual. Apparently not. I couldn't remember anything clearly, but I had a distinct sensation that this was not my first time experiencing the events of this particular day. You mean you've actually, you mean you've experienced Sachiko's birthday before? You know, part of me wouldn't actually be surprised if uh, something like that was actually a plot point to this game. How important it is in the grand scheme of things, I have no freaking clue, but if I were a betting man, and I kind of am, it, probably not that much. Somehow I could just... feel it. And I knew that just a few short hours ago, in our plain old familiar classroom to Friends all performed a ritual that sealed us here in this horrible place. It was called Sachiko Ever After, and try as I might, I couldn't stop them. Well, I think this definitely confirms that this takes place after a uh, Book of Shadows, because you were only able to, because you were only trying to stop the Sachiko Ever After charm once the first time loop began. I knew too. I knew this is what was going to happen! You knew and you did a piss poor job telling your friends what was going to happen. Yes, we remember, Satoshi. We remember very clearly. But something was different this time around. Wait. Auditorium? I don't think... I've ever been in this room before. Well, considering that this school can change its shape and layout on a whim, it, to me it's not really a stretch to think that this place literally just crafted an auditorium for itself, just for the special occasion that is this day. There were a lot of other people around as well. Students from a variety of different schools. Most wearing uniforms I didn't recognize. For all the world, it looked and felt just like a Monday morning assembly. And I clearly wasn't the only one confused by what was happening. Everybody was looking around in a daze, as if they'd all just woken up. Oh, yeah, I remember being transported here to Heavenly House Elementary, and I remember leaving Classroom 1A with you. But then there was a chime and a big earthquake, and 
all of a sudden I was here. Hold on. Where is everybody else? Where's the rest of 2 9? Looking closely, I could see a handful of students wearing the uniform of Byakudan Senior High School, which wasn't far from ours. I even recognized a uniform or two from uh, from Palowina Acad Academy High School, I think. We had mixers with them in the past. But where was Kisaragi? Had the others not been brought here this time? Was I... The only one? Naomi! Where are you? I missed you. Satoshi, are you okay? Mochida-kun! Mochida! Seiko! Naomi! Seiko, where is she? Bring me Seiko! F from deep within the throng of unfamiliar faces, Naomi and Shinohara came barreling toward me. The sight of friends amidst this chaos and energized me, as if lifting a cloud from my heart. Forgetting for a moment that Naomi was a girl, I rushed to meet her and hugged her with all my might. Who f- what- what the, Who freaking cares? Boy, girl, it's a friend, and it's a happy reunion, so hug away, you freaking weirdo. As, as happy as I am to see you again, Naomi, please wipe the tears away. I don't want to. I didn't want to see you again after several months. After several months. Wait a minute. Where am I getting several months from? It wasn't that long ago I completed Book of Shadows. You have no idea. No idea how worried I was. Tears were streaming down her cheeks. Most likely, she'd been subjected to unspeakable horrors in this school until just a few minutes ago. Just as Yuka and I had, you have no fucking clue. Or, or actually you will, eventually, when the, your memory uh, returns to you. Are you alright? You're not injured or anything, are you? No. There she is. Everybody's favorite lovable sex maniac. How about you, Shinohara? Are you okay? I'm fine. But more importantly, Naomi, you'd better not let go. Uh, huh? Uh, oh no! Naomi quickly pushed herself away. Shinohara was staring at her with an impish grin on her face. But she too had tears welling in her eyes. Oh dear. Big Brother! Yui! Where are you, Yui? Yuka, Shinozaki, Suzumoto, and Miss Yui were all together and seemed to have noticed us all at once. They came running over to join the reunion. Yuka! Yui-sensei! Yuka! Miss Yui! Big brother, are you okay? Satoshi! Mochida! You guys! Yoshiki! Shinozaki! Suzumoto! Morishige mo! There's my boy! How you doing, Yoshiki? Hello, Ayumi, Mayu, and um, Necrophiliac. I'm, I'm so glad you're all safe. <laughs> what are you crying for, Satoshi? That look, that look does not suit you at all. <laughs> <laughs> Your face is, really is kind of a disaster right now, man. Stick a mirror in front of my face so I can see. Like you guys look any better. 
Actually, they look a lot better than you probably do, actually. Did I just say actually twice? Man, I was so worried about all of you. Mochida. Mochida. We've been told that even though the nine of us were all here, in the same school, we existed in separate closed spaces and may never meet again. Yet here we were, non-separate dimensions closed off from one another, but gathered together in the same space, even the same room. We were still trapped in Heavenly Host Elementary, but my dearest wish to be able to see my friends once more had actually come to pass. This calls for a celebration, but not the kind that you are that, that you'll be expecting. So yeah, I was crying. I couldn't stop the tears from gushing out of my eyes even if I wanted to. We all slung our arms around one another's shoulders and enjoyed this first real moment of happiness any of us had experienced since this ordeal began. Hey there, Saika and Naho. Interesting to see you two here. Okay, maybe not really. I mean, I saw you both in the intro, but I mean... Yeah, on second thought, I guess it... Wait a minute, actually no. You should be dead by now, aren't shouldn't you, Saika? So how are you here? Because I thought they were I thought they were just gathering everybody who was still alive. Same with you, Naho. Whatever. I'm sure I'll get an answer here soon. Naho. Sayaka. Sayaka? Yes, for Sayaka. Remember her? She's the girl you use as a pawn to. Uh, Get to get to, to your beloved sensei and murder him while you were in a darkened induced fit of insanity. That Saika. You died for this bitch, Saika. You really shouldn't be uh that uh, that thrilled to see her. I know I wouldn't be. Other voices indicating similar teary reunions can be heard here and there throughout the auditorium. It seemed everyone here was in a similar situation to our own. It was kind of strange. I... recognized some of them? As if I met them in another life. Yet all the others in attendance were complete strangers. There you are, Miss Yui. So, what's actually happening? Someone must have intentionally gathered us all here together while we were unconscious. It's the only way a situation like this could come about. That's true. I'm glad we were all able to reunite like this, but we clearly still haven't escaped Heavenly Host, so we shouldn't get our hopes up yet. We have to keep ourselves on alert, okay? Why had we been assembled here? What was going to happen to us? I think I have an idea, and it's going to involve somebody being pinned to a wall, and everybody else is going to be blindfolded, and somebody's going to stick a tail on them with a really big nail to help attach it. Because this is Sachiko's birthday we're talking about. She's still a young girl, so I mean little games like little games like that I don't think would be an uncommon sight to see for such an occasion. I had a bad feeling about this, and I clearly wasn't the only one. A collective shudder ran through the room. Yukachi? Yukes? Who the hell are you? Yuka turned around to address a familiar voice that had spoken her name. 
It was, for some reason, her classmate, Satsuki Mizuhara. I repeat, who are you again? Nonchalantly munching on potato chips from a bag she seemed to have just taken out of the cupboard. I'd be very hesitant of eating any kind of food you'd find in a place like this. Because it could be poisoned. Or it might have insect eggs about to hatch or something, and then they'll all hatch in your stomach and eat you from the inside out. And just make a big fucking mess while you slowly bleed to death as you're torn apart from the inside out. Or maybe they're just expired and they'll give you a really nasty bathroom trip you'll have to contend with later. Huh? Satsuki? Why are you here? Not really sure. I was picking out at home. And then all of a sudden, here I was. I like how the how the crunching sound effects sounded separate from the from uh, the character's voice actor sounding like as though they have their mouth full. It was clearly a stock sound effect. Maybe the maybe her voice actor is not a fan of potato chips. No, 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 Coco. Speaking of, what is this place? <laughs> I think we all should prick our ears up and listen good. Not that good, though. Whoa! We spun ourselves around to see what had produced that ear-splitting feedback pulse. And there, standing upon the auditorium stage, was an enormous speaker. Where? Oh, oh shit! Oh, oh, damn it. Okay, stop! Oh, give me a break, not again. It's like history repeated itself. I tried to do one thing on my gamepad that wasn't just advancing advancing the dialogue, and then there I am fumbling with the controls trying to get the thing to stop speeding on ahead. It's like Book of Shadows all over again. Which is kind of funny because Based on what I've uh, learned so far, it seems to have a very identical setup to uh, Book of Shadows, so... That makes uh, that little fumbling I just experienced even more funny to me. Anyway... There. That's what I wanted to do. I wanted to just get rid of the dialogue box. Because I'm certainly not seeing an enormous speaker anywhere. Maybe if you pan the camera up or something... In line with it was the podium noted earlier, as well as mysterious announcement board, covered up with a ret with red cloth. Has that been there this whole time? May I have your attention please, everyone? Have you all come to? <laughs> Who's there? Where are you taking? And where are you talking to us from? I see that. I see the some of the Byakudan kids are here too. Everyone in the room began looking around frantically for any sign of the person speaking to them. Quiet now. Quiet, please. Eyes forward, everyone. It's good manners to look at someone in the eyes when they're speaking to you. Maybe we would. If there were somebody fucking there to look at! Thank you, Yoshiki. You took every single syllable right out of my gullet. As usual, Yoshiki did not mince words. As he shouldn't. But his protests were met by a close encounter with a metal hammer, which came whizzing toward him from the stage. Hammer time, don't you fucking kill my boy! Spinning wildly through the air. It was positively massive, almost unimaginably so. And the aim was spot on. 
it landed right at Yoshiki's feet, easily sinking itself deep into the floorboards where it remained, standing upright. Yoshiki fell to his knees, absolutely paralyzed with fear. Come on, man, it's just a it's just an oversized hammer. It could have been a lot worse. It could have been a giant freaking sword. <laughs> You have really good aim, Hammer Time. And you still have the same handsome mug as always. What the hell is that thing? That thing that you're looking at is what I refer to as Hammer Time. In, re in reference to his uh, favorite tool and what he likes to do with it to anybody he comes across. The giant man, Yoshikazu Yanagihori, Yanagihori, Hori, excuse me, was standing on one wing of the stage. He approached the podium at center stage and lifted a very little girl out from behind it, propping her up on his arm so the crowd could see her clearly. Was she there this whole time? She's so tiny. Well, being... S she was seven, right? I keep forgetting how old Sachiko actually was before she was killed. But, yeah, I'm, I'm going to assume seven. Actually, wait, I have those that character dossier thing. I can just consult that later, so that way I can uh, get a confirmation. She's so tiny. <laughs> You do not mince your words, Yoshikazu. Just like our boy, Yoshiki. <laughs> Yoshikazu's response to the murmuring crowd was to stamp his feet hard and let out a bellowing roar, instantly silencing the room. Thank you all for being here today, and for all your hard work up until now. You've done well to loop your way through this day again and again. This time will be a little different, though. This loop is special. Once the day ends, everything will go back to normal. Like this day never happened. In other words, pure, unfiltered, terror, anguish, bodily mutilation uh, across the board, and internal damnation to the way you were killed. Forever, and ever, and ever. No end in sight. Okay. It's, it's kind of um, a series of unlikely events. A side story, maybe? No, that's not it. A shindig? I think the word for it is anthology, anthology, anthology or something. And there are people present for it that you'll probably never be able to meet again. So be sure to enjoy yourselves while you can, okay? What the hell? Today is my birthday, you see, so I want everybody to have a really good time. Have a good time? With what? I feel bad for everybody, they must all be so terribly confused right now. And I kind of am too, because I'm kind of curious to understand why, uh, why this whole thing exactly is even happening to begin with. Like, 
how is how is your entire demeanor changing on your birthday? What are you what are you talking about? He wants to have fun? What does that mean? Probably not the kind of fun that we're all thinking, though. Because this is Sachiko we're talking about. I wouldn't be surprised if there were some very noteworthy strings attached to all this. We need to be careful. This could be a trap. That girl. I think she's... Oh, there he is. There's everybody's favorite stabby McMurder face. Well, I, his name is... You know her, Kizumi. Allow me to explain. See, you're going to put on a culture festival for me today. Well, Class 29 will be uh, perfectly uh, prepared for this. They were just doing a culture festival before this whole nightmare even began. So, what's all this about then? Mizuhara, no talking during the assembly. Sachiko quickly threw something in Sachiko's direction with deadly accuracy. It was chalk. It smacked her right in the forehead. The fleshy splucked, and down she went. I was kind of predicting it would hit her in the nose. Excuse me? Yes. Halloween Academy High School, Class 2-1, Sayaka Ui. It was one of the girls from another school. She raised her hand enthusiastically, as if this were a proper class, and she was aiming for high marks. Sachiko seemed to take well to this, pointing at the girl named Sayaka Ui urging her to state her business. Huh? She couldn't possibly know the names of every one of the victims trapped in here, could she? Well, that is a very good question, considering, well, I'm pretty sure most of, she doesn't even remember most of her victims on a personal level because, well, after a while she's just basically killing people instead just for the fun of it, instead of just to give her mom company, so... I mean, basically, it's, it would just turn into an air for me, it was Tuesday kind of situation after a while. Naomi seemed to be studying the girl closely. Um, I'd like to go home, please! That seems like not, just, not, not such a smart thing to say. Gee, I wonder why. I the Sachiko just swatted the idea away like it was a pesky fly without even flinching. And without ever losing her smile. Nope. That's not allowed. Worst celebration ever, then! You think we give a shit about your birthday? Just let us go home, goddammit! As a boy with the red hair, Kai Shimada, spat out his demand, the rest of the attendees became riled up and began, began making similar demands of their own. Oh yeah, Kai Shimada, the uh, asshole from uh, Tooth in the last game. Well, the other asshole, besides Kizumi. Sachiko raised her hand slowly, pointing at Shimada, before hastily swinging it downward. It'll become clear why in just a moment. Is somebody. What are you gonna do? Drop a piano on him or something? Who the fuck do you even think you are? What gives you the right to make fools of us like this, you little bitch? <laughs> Going by the sounds of glass, it probably is actually a chandelier.
One of the lights from almost directly above Shimada came crashing to the floor with tremendous force, brushing up against his cheek on the way down. Come on, Sachiko. There is a perfectly good piano that's in the music room in this school, and you couldn't have used it just to flatten somebody at some point? I'm very disappointed. In a state of absolute shock, a cold sweat immediately formed on his body, and he collapsed to the ground in a heap. <laughs> Why is everybody... Why is everybody uh, reacting this way? Is everybody now turning into sociopaths? During morning assembly, please raise your hand if you wish to speak. But no one else raised their hands. No one else uttered even a single peep, in fact. The room fell dead silent. Somehow, this made Sachiko's smile all the more menacing. Then, finally, the silence was broken. Over here, Nana! How you doing? Yes? Masu Masushigawa Girls is Middle School, Class 1-4. Nana also got Masa Ogasawara. What do you intend to do? For us to do at this culture festival. Oh, what a good question. The teacher loves students who pay attention. Sachiko raised her hand again with a flourish, and the cloth covering the board beside her fell away. Upon it was a hand drawn map of the school that was somehow simultaneously joyous and I call it Heavenly Host and Sachiko present Chew Them Up and Spit Them Out The Great Confinement of Rotting Flesh Festival Summer Edition What are you gonna do? Turn us all into cannibals and start eating corpses around the school? I guess that would be a pretty efficient way to clean up the halls, wouldn't it? Look at that silence. It's just... so pronounced. I thought it was a pretty good name. <laughs> I think he said... Say it's a good name, plebs! Yoshikazu Yanagihori once again bellowed at the crowd and slammed his foot upon the floor with all his might. It was such a powerful stomp, in fact, that the whole room shook for several seconds afterward, the lights above clinking unsettlingly the whole time. How fucking strong are you? Clap, everybody. Clap! Sachiko's smile couldn't have been any wider or, surprisingly, any purer. Doesn't look any different to me than before. She shifted her weight a bit and hopped over to the podium for a better, more central seat from which to address her captive audience. And then, suddenly, she pointed toward the presentation board with a, conduct a conductor stick she'd somehow produced. As you can see, I painstakingly prepared a full course of recreational activities for you all. And I've also listed out which students will be participating in each of these activities. Where you all wish to begin chow, uh, entertaining yourselves is more or less up to you. She was about to say challenging, wasn't she? And 
what does she mean by more or less? Usually by more, usually, well, in this context, I think she means purely by your discretion. In other words, it's a free-for-all. It was pretty clear that these were, weren't going to be quite as fun or entertaining for us as we were being so poorly led to believe. Also, since the time axis has gone screwy, the connections between dimensions may get all messed up. But if so, don't worry about it. It's fine. Fine for you, maybe! Yoshi barked out his misgiving. Yoshiki barked out his misgivings despite himself. Also... You all got here by performing a charm, right? Yes! In fact, Naho can tell us all about it. Well... Well, today, we have some extra special guests joining us, too. These are people you might share a connection with. I suspect a surprise may have been spoiled for a few of you, though. When you saw one of our surprise guests earlier. What? Who? You mean. Yuka's friend or something? Yuka turned to look at Satsuki. Yep. So. Friends? Oh! Pleased to meet you all! Since I haven't been able to connect with these people on a spiritual level, they're just here for the day. <laughs> are you are you serious? So you you literally just pulled new faces like out of the moral world or something and then just plopped them here just because? How the fuck can you do that? That's that hardly seems fair. I mean, don't you have to follow that charm in order to get here? When the date changes, they get to go home. Again, hardly seems fair. Of course, if they die, they stay here forever, so be careful, okay? Hey, you wouldn't happen to be... Shishido, would you? Hey, Sukasa! Dear God, you haven't aged a fucking day. You hear that, or you just never, never got a change of clothes from after you graduated high school? In which case, you must be very fucking poor. The complete and utter shock in her voice was beyond apparent. Suddenly, there stood Miku Mikuni Sukasa, decked out in his school uniform. Exactly as Yui remembered him from her own school days. So you are her then? Why are you an adult? Okay, so I just have thought. If you literally hadn't if you haven't aged at all from your high school days, then does that mean that you died at some point shortly thereafter? Or were you just brought here? as your younger incarnation just because. Because I don't think that uh, I ever heard learned anything about you dying some at some point after uh, that little adventure you and Yui had in her uh, chapter in Book of Shadows. So I'm assuming that it's the latter instead of the former. Uh, um, I... I don't really know. It's really him. It's Tsukasa. Still a high school student, just like I remember. He's so cute. Hi. I have a question. Yes. Kisaragi Academy Senior High School Class 29, Mayu Suzumoto. 
せっかく楽しい一日にするのならもっと明るいタイトルの方がいいと思うの。Um, Sachiko, if you really do want this to be a day of fun activities, maybe you could stand up a brighter, happier title. Nana, Shihaya, and Nari all nodded in agreement for some reason. Speak up, Sachi! I barely heard you! Like what exactly? How about Sachiko's hysteric birthday? We haven't even we haven't even gone beyond the prologue yet. No way, we got the tile drop. The audience certainly seemed to like it, but then Maya was in the theater club, so it only stood to reason. She knew how to sell an idea. Bit by bit, as she surveyed the applauding students, the look on Sachiko's face changed from one of pouty dejection to pure, unbridled enthusiasm. Yes, that's perfect. That's what we'll call it. She most likely had no clue what hysteric meant. Shiki, Shimada, and Morishiki weren't exactly on board with the idea. In fact, they made it they, which, in fact, which they made abundantly clear. Mayu, what are you thinking? Mayu, what are you thinking? That's our enemy. The one who trapped us here. You know, now that I think about it, I'm kind of glad that、uh, you're not losing your shit now that Mayu's in front of you, Morishiki. Because considering what happened in the last couple games and how freaking cuckoo for Cocoa Puffs you became, I was totally expecting something like that to have occurred if you actually met Mayu when she wasn't just basically silly p u b b y on the wall. I know. I'm scared too. But. I feel like she's probably pretty lonely herself, you know? That's what, exactly what you said about the other ghost children, and look what happened to you then. You mustn't emphasize with evil spirits, though. You don't want to get swallowed up into this heavy atmosphere, do you? He kind of has a point. I mean, that's pretty much exactly what happened twice. You don't get to speak, Ayumi. You've been nothing but you've been nothing but a roller coaster of bad ideas ever since Book of Shadows. I think you're the one who doesn't get Morishigi. If we play along for games, we can try and find a chance to slip past her. It's a very valid tactic, and. Well, I, for one, have no problem with it. You don't even know what the games are going to entail, you buffoon! Huh? And now, without further ado, I present to you my hysteric birthday! There he is! The man, the legend. What in the world is this? Rap? Why, though? <laughs> you do often hear about unexplained rapping in Han places. LOL. Is that LOL? As in laugh out loud? I'm assuming that's probably what it is. Also, who the fuck expects.、Uh, where do you hear about unexplained rapping haunted places? What ghost, haunt, haunt, what ghost haunting blog do you visit? Those lyrics are creeping me out, though. Positively beaming now, Sachiko turned her head to look at something farther back 
on the stage. To make things extra special, I'll be picking the first amusement myself. Well, I think that's fair. I mean, it is your birthday. Let's see now. She suddenly had a knife in her hands and was tossing and catching it absent mindedly as she considered her options. She then swung back around triumphantly. <laughs> I think I'm in the mood for a nice romantic comedy. I think I'm going to lose my more of my innocence this day, or the next day, or whenever I play this again, assuming I don't see whatever the hell kind of romantic comedy this is going to be. Either way, at the end of this, I'm pretty sure I'm going to be a changed man. A very, very changed man. And I've seen my fair share of really wacky shit in anime. Hmm? Didn't you hear me? I said I'm in the mood mood for a romantic comedy. A romantic comedy? Seriously? Uh huh. A romantic comedy. Romantic comedies with school settings are really big right now, aren't they? Ma, so. Well, yeah, I guess. What the hell? But what the hell kind of role am I supposed to play in a romantic comedy? Um, the female lead, perhaps Yoshiki. I mean, I guess if Shinozaki and I are the stars, it wouldn't be so bad. It'd be fucking torture for me, though. Because it's you, and it would be her. Did Kishinuma just look over at me? Nah, must be my imagination. Go on ahead, you keep doubting the evidence of your eyes. You just keep doubting and doubting and doubting. And then firm, firmly believing whatever the hell you want, because that hasn't been biting you square in the ass for the past couple games. <laughs> no, there's no way I could pull something like that off. It'd be too embarrassing. Mm -hmm. He seems kind of angry or something. See? And for those kinds of stories to be that popular, they must be pretty funny, right? Well, if you're going with the modern definition of comedy, yes, that would uh, kind of imply that there w are some laughs to be had by necessity. Come on up. Doesn't necessarily mean that there will be laughs here if you kind of suck at your script, though. Maybe. So you'll perform one for me then, won't you? Ma. <laughs> That kind of depends on the script, I guess. Hey, blockhead, start passing them out. Poor blockhead. Even on her birthday, he's nothing more than just a lackey with a giant hammer. You would think that out of one day in the, in the whole fucking year, you'd get a little bit of respect. It'd be this day. But no. Nothing but eternal slavery for you, Hammer Time. Yoshikazu Yanagohiri began handing copies of a thin, offset book to each of the person in attendance. Each beautifully bound mini-tome was adorned with gaudy decorations highlighting the title of the work contained within. What is How's this? Is this literally a script? Heavenly Host Elementary Harem School Days? The Great Love Love Maneuver? <laughs> oh 
god, that title. There's so much wrong with that. I don't even know where to start. Um, well... The Great Love Love Maneuver could reference all kinds of different love love maneuvers, shall we say. And the fact that uh, love love maneuvers are occurring at elementary school should be very alarming. Especially harems involving love love maneuvers. Just... <laughs> seriously. That title. Uh-huh. Pretty cool title, don't you think? Super fucking cool, Sachi. Super fucking cool. I don't know a lot about romantic comedies, but I know a garbage title when I hear one. Fuck you, Yoshi! That is not a garbage title! It's freaking Shakespeare in its, in its ingeniousness. If that's even a word. Huh? I'm the lead? Why him? Yep. Looks that way. Probably for the best, honestly. Be a weird-ass romantic comedy with me in the lead. The other principal characters are Nakashima, Shinozaki... Wait, Shinozaki's in it, too? As, as a member of the harem? <laughs> you feeling jelly, Yoshi? I wouldn't, normally I wouldn't egg you, normally I wouldn't really egg you on like this, uh, Yoshiki, because I do like you, but, I mean, it's freaking Ayumi that you're crushing on, and I really, really don't care about her all that much, so, um, <laughs> if you're gonna keep crushing after her, then, well, I'm going to have at least a little bit of fun at your expense, too. I mean, it's, you're kind of bringing it on yourself here for having such poor taste in, uh, romant and, uh, romance choices, or... Not romance choices, but love interests. That's what I meant. I do not like where this is going. Who else is in this cast? Gotta keep reading. Miss Yui too? And Yuka? Oh god, no! Oh no! If Yuka is gonna... If, if this is going to be an actual harem, and Yuga is going to be a love interest for our uh, main protag, oh dear god. Oh, this is going to be a- this is going to be special. I can tell already. Man, the list just keeps on growing. Kirisaki Toko te dareda? Who's Toko Kirisaki? Kirisaki te Toko Kisaraki is a girl who idolizes a particular classmate of hers way too much. Because she just doesn't know. She just doesn't know, man. And as for Satsuki, I don't remember. Is Yuka's friend, right? Well, I guess I should check out the actual script to see what happens to everybody. Hmm? Hmm. It hasn't been written yet, has it? What? Come on! It's blank. It's blank, right? Don't dry don't drag it out. Just tell us what we want what it is. The hell is this tripe? It's just Sat Satoshi literally ganged every single girl here for no good reason whatsoever! Well, that is pretty much the vast majority of every harem anime ever, is it not? Isn't that what romantic comedies are, though? The main guy is super popular with every, every girl for no reason at all? No, that's what ha a harem anime is, Sachiko. A romantic comedy does not have to be limited to harem. Okay, sure, granted. But still, you really plan to make Shinozaki and the other girls play along with this crap? I... 
honestly don't mind. Of course you wouldn't, because you have a because you have a lady heart on for a freaking Satoshi. Poor poor Satoshi to be condemned to have a, her as a romantic partner. Although to be fair, maybe it would be slightly better than it being your own sister. Top. I, and I say slightly because it's freaking Ayumi. Because if it was literally anybody else, I would say it's miles better by default. Are you serious? It's a harem romance, Shinozaki! A freaking harem! I mean, it is what it is, right? Oh, I see. You don't. You just don't mind. You're just so desperate for freaking Satoshi's freaking gentleman sausage. That you are willing to even share it with literally every other girl in the school to get it, right? I thought you had a I thought you had standards, Miss Class President. <laughs> you though, Naomi, I expect better of you. Well, then again, at least, at least let me hear your answer first. Gah. Don't tell me, Nakashima, you're cool with this too. Yeah, as long as Satoshi is the lead, I don't mind at all. I expected better of you, Naomi. Also, I feel bad for free I feel bad for Why am I drawing a blank on her name right now? Why? 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 Seiko, there we go. I feel I'm feeling bad for Seiko now. She's somewhere close by listening to all this. I mean, I'm not saying uh I just mean, it's better if, than if it were a stranger, right? L yeah, you could say the same thing for, uh, freaking Ayumi and Yuka, but, I mean, you're just... Whatever. Fuck you now, whatever. Yuka And I bet I'm pretty sure I know what your response is going to be, more or less. And how much enthusiasm is gonna be in it. Right, Yuka? Am I right on the money? What about you, Yuka? Huh? I haven't read the script yet. But if it's but if it's with Big Brother, I don't mind one bit. Well, I'm pretty sure you'll be very enthused for a few seconds once you read the script, and then those that enthusiasm will dissipate like a like a cloud of smoke once you realize you guys share him with literally every other girl around. And you too, Miss Yui, and freaking Miss Yui. That these are these are your this is your student we're talking about. I mean, I know that I mean I know that uh, the teacher-student romance angle can be a pretty hot thing for some people, but I mean, come on, Miss Yui. I would have thought you'd have been better than that. Huh? Kishinuma, I haven't said a word yet. Why are you getting so angry? Just answer the question, Miss Yui. Do you accept this script? I'm not wholeheartedly embracing it, no, but it's better than any of that scary stuff, at least, right? I suppose by a slight margin, yes. Well, seems everybody else is on board. <laughs> you shut your goddamn mouth! I don't care if every girl here is okay with it. I'm not! Why should everybody listen to you, though? Actually... You know what, let's just hear you out first. You weren't, you weren't this against it before, Big Brother, though, Big Brother. That's right. Kishinuma, what's gotten you so uptight? Shinozaki! Shinozaki? Shinozaki? It might make me a smaller person. 
But I just don't want to have to watch you get close to Satoshi like that. You know that this is a play, right? I don't care if you understand. I, for one, won't be a part of this farce. That's okay. You weren't in the script to begin with, big brother. Ouch. Nonetheless, I will not support this production! I stand opposed! Is it me or is your Is it me or is your outfit slightly different, Shimada? I don't care for it either. If you're gonna make anyone in the male lead, you ought to pick me, not plain ass nobody with no special traits what whatsoever. Fuck off, Shimada. What? What do you mean, no special traits? Also, I don't think my qualifications are the issue here. Didn't you hear me? Then I'll say it again. If you're gonna make anyone the damned lead of this fucking stupid rom-com, then pick me, not this boring-ass goody two-shoes every man. You don't have to be so mean about it. And that wasn't my- oh. oh, great. Okay, there we go. You don't have to be so mean about it. And that wasn't my point anyway. It's not about me. Putting aside Mochida's unique traits or lack thereof, I too stand in opposition to this charade. However, however if it must be performed, then I propose picking someone far more suitable for the lead. Someone with theater experience, such as myself. He does have a point there. Huh? Morishigi, you object to me as the lead too? If you didn't hear me, I'll be happy to repeat myself. I don't need you or anyone else to repeat yourself, damn it! I'm just lamenting the fact that every guy here seems very much opposed to me taking this role. Putting aside Mochida's unique traits or lack thereof, I too stand in pose of, to the charade. If, however, it must be performed, then I propose picking someone far more suitable for the lead. Someone with theater experience, such as myself. He literally just repeated everything word for word. I just said I didn't need you to repeat yourself. And why did you have to repeat everything you said? He's a professional, man. Regardless of your lack of unique traits, you too must be opposed to this farce. Right, Satoshi? Right? Yoshiki, not you too. If you didn't hear me, then allow me to repeat myself. Stop, damn it! Don't you dare! I'm not complaining about being unable to hear what you're saying. My hearing is just fine. And I don't give a crap about your hearing. I'm just asking if you're okay with performing this absurd romantic comedy as written. Well, I mean, no, but still. But... See? This isn't a question of whether or not you have any traits worthy of the role now, is it? No, I guess it isn't. That is completely beside the point. But I can't help being at least a little bothered. Do you really think I'm that bland? You kind of are, you man. There really wasn't anything that special about you, except for the fact that you were basically the only one with a kid's sister in that place. Barring uh, Kizumi's imaginary one. Yoshiki? Mm 
もしもし。よしきさん。Hello? Earth to Yoshiki. どうしても答えないといけないのか。Do I really have to answer that? えー、すごく答えづらい質問だったの俺に特徴があるかどうか聞くのってそんなに厳しいことなの Is it really that tough a question? Do you really have to think that hard about whether or not I clearly I have a clear defined personality? Big brother. Hey, Yukes, is your big brother really like one of those blank slate dudes you see in anime? Someone with no unique characteristics to speak of? Yeah, well, a lot of you are all just at stereotype, our, our character stereotypes. What? Satsuki do! Huh? S Satsuki! Well, that's what everybody's saying. And nobody stepped in to say otherwise. But. When you put it so bluntly like that, I just. feel kind of bad for him. Yeah, I suppose you would. But despite him being such a blank slate, that doesn't stop you from, from crushing on him, now does it? You really do have poor taste, Yuka. And that's not even getting to the fact that, you know, he's your brother. No, Yuka. Not you two. Speak up, Satoshi! I barely heard you! And I have and I have voice volume up to max. Haha! <laughs> that's not it! You're very protagonisty, big brother! What the hell is is that even a word? You're really cool-headed, and when something needs to get done, you step in and do it. I don't know what any of us would do without you. You forgot the fa you, you forgot the fact that he also doesn't like ghost stories. You could have brought that up. That's at least a little bit of depth. But would you say I have you? Would you say I have unique personality traits? I'm only hearing otherwise, man. But Yuke's is right. That does make you very protagonisty. Satsuki! What? Think about it. Calling someone protagonisty is a compliment, but when you get right down to it, it basically just means they're really ordinary. Then it's not really a freaking compliment, is it? Don't worry, Satoshi. I'm here to help. First, go to the library and start reading some books. Preferably any, anything involving fiction. Anything that involves you having to really use your imagination in order to picture up scenes, appearances of characters, etc., etc. That'll get your brain a good workout. And then once you have a good imagination, then you can, then your then whatever love that you might develop for fictional works will probably uh, kickstart something. I'm hoping. If it doesn't, then well, you're truly hopeless. If if a freaking fictional book can't help you. That doesn't matter right now, Satoshi. So so that. Oh yeah, that's right. Right now, it makes no difference whether or not I have anything new to bring to the table. Satoshi, Satoshi, are you in or are you out? You're totally against this script too, right? I, I as a totally blank and ununique person, pro tag, and I lost what I was go. I I lost my I lost what I was going to say. I blame Ayumi. Yes, you're going to just accept the script. You are against it, aren't you? Your silence speaks volumes, Satoshi. Satoshi? Satoshi?
俺は賛成だ。I'm in. Anything to make you feel unique at this point, right, Satoshi? <laughs> We have a chance to experience one full day without any scary stuff happening. Um, Satoshi, I hate to be the bearer of bad news, but. Scary fucking shit can happen in romantic comedies too. I've seen enough to know that for a fact. So I feel like it would be best to play along. Also, I must point out this is. A, this is a romantic comedy scripted by Sachiko of all people. So. I would. I'd be very surprised indeed if there wasn't at least one scary element in there. I misjudged you, man. While you were up there being subjected to countless worldly pleasures, just think about what Shinozaki and I are going through! That's not it, Yoshiki. I just don't think we should defy Sachiko right now. Oh, come on. You just want to have every every freaking girl in the, in the school right now just up in your face. Just be honest about it. Or at least Shinzaki. Besides, Shinzaki says she didn't mind. Isn't that right, Shinzaki? You're okay playing along, right? Sure. Shinozaki! Do you even know what you're saying, Shinozaki? <laughs> Yoshiki, of course she doesn't know what she's saying. It's Ayumi we're talking about. She's the least qualified to know what she's saying now of everybody else here. What do you mean? I said before that I was okay with the script. But, but Satoshi's the lead. It's a harem! Yeah, and Mochida said he's cool fit too, so there's no problem. Honestly, Kishinuma, have you been even have you even been listening? <laughs> Come on, man. Surely surely somebody here is at least picking up on the fact here that he's a jealous over Satoshi getting, well, somebody he wants to uh, get a little closer to. Come on! There's gotta be somebody here who is picking up on this shit, right? Like, I mean, just listen to him! He's wheezing in pain! Yoshiki, are you okay? I'm Yoshiki, are you okay? You look like you're in shock or something. But you're not even in this production, so it shouldn't make a difference to you, right? Satoshi. Satoshi. Hmm? Satoshi! I'm going to be a friend Oh no! Oh no. Satoshi, we are no longer friends! Well, I guess that's. I guess you should say goodbye to your friendship bracelets now. Yoshiki, why are you being like this? Why don't you, won't you accept that performing this romantic comedy is the right thing to do? You are the one who isn't getting it, Satoshi! That's because I don't understand a thing you're saying, Yoshiki. Well, of course you don't. You're not exactly the brightest tool in the shed here. I don't care. I oppose this romantic comedy. How come? <laughs> Finally, someone asks the hard que the hard question. I had a whole fun day planned out for you and everything. How come you gotta fight like that? How come? 
Because of you! Because you wrote this stupid script! That's such a mean thing to say, big brother. No. I can't call you big brother anymore. You don't deserve it. Oh no. You've lost the big brother title. If you and your friends are so against my romantic comedy, Kishinuma, then I have another idea of what you can do. Well, as soon as you had the big brother name taken away from you, all bets were our bet all bets were off. Let's be perfectly fair here. Now if you're really lucky, you'll just she'll probably just have you dress up in an animal suit and have you as a freaking mule to drive everybody around the stage or something. That's probably the least humiliating thing I can think that she'll uh, have you do. Crap. I think I made her mad. Well, duh? Anyone who wants to escape will be given a chance. But it won't be easy. I prepared an escape room scenario on the other side of that door. Did you? If you, if you can make it to the goal, I'll let you and one other person escape. Because it's lonely being the only one, right? You serious? That's if you can make it to the goal. That, that little grin of yours tells me that there's going to at least be spike traps and flamethrowers involved. Number one, shame upon the battlefield. Okay, so who are you? Ran, are you okay? I'm okay, dear wife. Oh wait, this must this must be the romantic comedy in question, right? Oh Lord, please take pity upon us and grant us your cleansing light to wash away our sins. This prayer for light offered up by my dear wife wended its way into the, the air. But it was quickly snuffed out by the overwhelming darkness of the school. My name is Ran K Kobuyashi. I'm a second year at St. Cruz's Girls Academy. My wife's name is Azusa Takia Takai. She's a schoolmate of mine from the same grade. What sets her apart from so many others, though, is that when she prays to God above, wondrous miracles sometimes come to pass. Do you think your prayers will even reach their mark from a place like this, so far removed from the world we know? Of course. My, my, my lord watches over us always, and, and can see us from anywhere. I'm certain my prayers are being heard. Oh dear wife, you truly are as pi as pi 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 as they come. I, I don't think I'm saying that word right. Simply being by your side makes me feel as though my heart is, has been purified. Ma! I should point out, so that there's no misunderstanding, that Azusa is not my actual legal wife. I was wondering. We're both still in high school after all. And we're both girls. So there are many hurdles to overcome before we can make our union official. Our names won't appear, be appearing in one another's family registers anytime soon. Sad as that is to say. Don't let your guard down, Ran. You'll be absorbed by the darkness if you do. 
Oh? Is darkness such a bad thing? Not on its own. But this space itself uh, holds a certain power that most definitely is. Spaces can hold power? You can feel it when you go to church, can't you? A holy presence in the air? I can feel that the air around me is very pretty, I guess. Well, this is the opposite of that. I think I understand. It's pretty difficult to breathe here. Stagnant air breeds stagnant power. And there are those who have openly accepted su such power within themselves. Scary people? You don't mean... Vengeful spirits, do you? Actually... I'm, I wonder... I'm gonna save the game real quick here. Because... I'm, I'm assuming I moved on to a new chapter, right? Let me go to the tile screen real fast. Ending list. Oh, so I did. Yeah, I guess then I I guess I should just go ahead and end it here. I mean, it's already been over a ha an hour and a half since I started this thing, so I guess it'd be a good thing to end things on. So this is shaping up to be an interesting little uh, adventure so far even though it hasn't properly begun as of yet i do worry though for what yoshiki is going to have to do once the romantic com once uh, the romantic comedy starts proper assuming that uh the escape route plan doesn't go very well But I guess we'll figure out uh, what what's going to go on with that along with, uh, well, who these uh, two characters are and what exactly they're doing within the halls of Heavenly Host in the next episode. I hope you guys enjoyed the, this first episode of uh, Corpse Party uh, Sweet Sachiko's Hysteric Birthday Bash. If you did and you want to see more content from me, feel free to subscribe to my channel. I will see you all next time. Take care. <laughs>